It sucks. It's Neil again. Kind of sort of talking about China. Kind of sort of talking about Egypt. Kind of sort of talking about Sudan. Kind of sort of talking about Ethiopia. In prior videos, I talked about the Ethiopia Egypt thing. Yeah, that's right, Neil Champion. Woo woo! -woo. Uh, anyhow, I was talking about the Egypt and uh, Ethiopia thing, and uh, I said they're fixing to go to war. And uh, I just came across this. It seems like someone else is figuring it out, and they got themselves a little uh, program here. Uh, it's uh, the dam is called the GERD. If you go back to my other video, it's the uh, G E R D is the the initials for it, so they're calling it the GERD dam. And uh, China was just kicked out of the uh, peace talks between them because China's invested actually a couple billion dollars in the uh, GERD Dam in Ethiopia, and it's got a lot of billions in Sudan and in Egypt. So they're going to lose <laughs> whichever way this goes. So just another hit for China, but that's not what this is about. I just like seeing the CCP take a hit. Uh, go ahead and let me get you over here so that way you can hear for yourself. I'll turn the volume up. I know I've been screwed up on the volume. I'm not doing it right for you guys. So uh, I got the volume turned up right now. Buy some silver and some platinum, people. Save yourselves financially. All right, here we go. Beijing maintains close ties with almost all countries in this region. But lately, trouble seems to be sifting that through might be this a little region too loud. as the Lion a Dam dispute is turning volatile, paving the pathway to a needless conflict. China may have thought it was pertinent to don the mediators ahead to help solve the crisis. But the response from the African nations has left Beijing in fraught silence. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host, Tejas Malhotra. And if you haven't subscribed to the TFI Global channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. And please install our Apple and Android mobile app. The link is given below in the description. Let's begin. In January Sorry, 2022, having fun. Drifting away from his usual self, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi announced all of a sudden the appointment of a special envoy to the Horn of Africa. Wang claimed the announcement as an initiative of peaceful development in the Horn of Africa. The Horn of Africa, also known as the Somali Peninsula, is a large area in the Eastern African region. It is composed she said the of Horn countries of Africa. like Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somali, Somaliland, and Djibouti. Beijing's hasty efforts That's your booty, to she said and it, resolve not me. the problem demonstrate the region's importance and the geopolitical influence China yearns for in the Horn of Africa region. Ethiopia. Everything started with the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, a project that That's GERD. Abba is building on the Blue Nile, the main tributary of the River Nile, at a cost of $5 billion. This has invariably raised the tensions with Egypt and Sudan as they both fear it will threaten their water security. Tensions transcended to a more hostile relationship between these countries as Ethiopia announced the completion of the second filling phase of the dam's reservoir, despite Egypt and Sudan's rejection. Superpowers are interested in the Horn of Africa because it has a significant amount of undiscovered natural resources. Additionally, the area provides a favorable environment for investors, and we know that China won't let such a chance slip from its hands. Ethiopia, being a stable force in the region, moves in good facts with Beijing. During his meeting with Sri in March, Ethiopian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demiki Mikkonen praised China's support for his country in international forums. He said that Beijing has held his country toward threats to its sovereignty and territorial integrity. John Calabrese, the director of the Middle East Asia Project at the Middle East Institute, told that Ethiopia is a regional heavyweight in the Horn of Africa. It appears that Beijing sees Ethiopia as a key outpost from which to extend its political influence and commercial reach, he further added. You see, China, along with Russia, has gone to such lengths to support Ethiopia's stand against rebel Tigray, He's trying to poke his eyes out for us all. To become the most trusted ally in this region. 
China also opposed the U.S. sanctions on Ethiopia and Eritrea, both accused of committing brutal rapes and massacres. That is a bad area. China then made a quick leap in financing the grid project with a loan of $1 billion. Beijing is also investing $1.8 billion to fund the expansion of Ethiopia's electricity grid, while two Chinese companies are involved in building the grid. Furthermore, China also has a huge investments in Egypt and Sudan, with a big say in financing the new administrative capital being built outside Cairo, of which the China State Construction Engineering Corporation is one of the many contractors. And Sudan remains one of the first countries to sign the infamous Belt and Road Initiative in Africa. And for a certain period, it was Beijing who topped the list of Sudan's strategic partners. Chinese investments in Sudan are distributed in the oil, infrastructure, agriculture and mining sectors. China jumping head long into the Nile Dam dispute has not aligned with either Egypt or Sudan's interests. Both Egypt and Sudan have placed their bet on the UN Security Council and not Beijing to end the dispute. The popular view goes that China harbors a softer approach when it comes to Ethiopia. So, China's position in the Nile Dam dispute hangs in balance and is prone to get the robbed of both Egypt and Sudan. With Egypt and Sudan giving signs for China to step back from its mediatory role, it is sure that Beijing's pattern of wresting control over the Horn of Africa needs a rework. Well, there you go, you know, not only did Neil say it, but you heard it from someone else in some other news organization. Uh, again, check the videos that I did. I talked about this, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I didn't realize China had such a heavy investment in the GERD Dam, as it turns out to be, and with the other infrastructure from the herd, the GERD Dam, that extra $1.8 billion, they're in it for like almost $7 billion. And they got a lot of money tied up in Sudan and Egypt. So you have four financially concerned partners, <laughs> not partners, uh, countries that are at dispute and the biggest one, China, who everyone seems to think Africa loves China. Well, they just kicked them out of this dispute and said, screw you, you guys are screwed. We, we don't. Again, another sign for which I did a video on telling you people that China is not liked by Africa and the people in Africa are the government. They will, they will coup in a heartbeat and take the government out if they don't listen to the people. Most countries, the ones that aren't like controlled by like heavy dictatorial decree, which I think is like three, maybe four countries that are like, don't go, it's not safe. But anyhow, uh, I hope you guys heard the uh, fireworks in the background. It's great 4th of July. Not only are we blowing up shit here in Vallejo, but it looks like the rest of the world's decided to join us and start to uh, see the issues that I've been trying to point out to people, which is the Ethiopia-Egypt-Sudan conflict. Anyhow, you guys have a great and safe 4th of July. Bye-bye. Buy some silver and platinum.